So I've had my Model 3 for about six months now. Six month review coming soon, by the way. And I have lived with and without premium connectivity. So I wanted to look in this video at what premium connectivity gets you, what it's like living with and without it, and then what happens after eight years if you don't have it. Here's my thoughts. So the whole idea of premium connectivity is not a new thing and not an exclusive thing to Tesla. Many other companies have a premium subscription service or a way basically to access, you know, Wi-Fi hotspots, sometimes even over the air updates, streaming music or videos, uh, just a way to keep your car connected. That is not usually free. For example, Ford connectivity, it's free for a year, but then it's $150 a year or a one-time purchase of $745 for a two seven years, whatever that means. Uh, Kia Connect has subscription services anywhere from like 70 to 150 to $200 a year. Um, and you have to have that even to get OTA updates as far as I know. <clears throat> or they also offer 15 to $20 a month. Then there's Rivian Connect Plus. Maybe that's the best thing to look at because that's the most comparable vehicle as far as a US EV with software that's really good. Um, so I'm always curious what Rivian versus Tesla does. Rivian Connect Plus is $15 a month or $150 a year after a two month trial. So suddenly it doesn't seem so expensive for Tesla. Tesla's premium connectivity is $99 a year or if you pay it monthly, it's $9.99 a month, which means $120 a year if you just do it that monthly succession. Um, I think that's pretty fine. Although it'd be interesting, in my opinion, if they had longer than one year. You know like how Ford lets you buy it one time? Uh, Tesla lets you buy FSD once, although sometimes you can't necessarily transfer it, so who knows if they would let you transfer it your connectivity. But like, in my case, I'm leasing this for two years. I feel like they should have just had a premium connectivity two year, maybe 180 bucks. I don't know, let me know if I'm crazy, but that's just my thoughts. But as it is, 10 bucks a month, that's really not that bad for I think what it gets you. What's cool is you can now use referral credits to buy premium connectivity, which I think is great. I was actually about to make a hit piece video on why it's ridiculous that Tesla doesn't let you do that. And then they suddenly let you do that. So even if you get one referral, that basically covers premium connectivity for years, depending on what else you spend that money on. And then for some people, you're actually grandfathered into an existing premium connectivity subscription. You see, initially, earlier on, Tesla cars, Model S and Model X, were premium vehicles. So premium connectivity was just an added benefit of getting kind of an earlier Tesla. But once the cheaper cars started rolling out, specifically June 2018, after that point, they no longer let you have free premium connectivity for life. And they even started rolling back some of the grandfathering. It's, it's, it's confusing to keep an eye on like, or to keep track of what Tesla actually does with some of their subscription services that are initially free and then cost money later and they always change the prices. It's just really confusing. But some older cars have productivity for life. Other cars don't. They used to have like a two month trial. Now they have a one month trial. It is confusing. So just as of right now, all you have to know is 10 bucks a month, 100 bucks a year and a one month free trial. I actually had that one month free trial and I let it lapse so I can talk about how it was to live with standard connectivity. Okay, so yes, standard connectivity was something I lived for or lived with for maybe a week or two because that's all I could take without having premium connectivity. I know I'm, you know, it's very to each your own. Some people don't think premium connectivity is worth it at all. Um, others do. We'll talk about what it includes in a minute, but standard connectivity, just means you basically get, well, Bluetooth connectivity to do any audio. You don't have your streaming. Like, you know, if you go to Apple Music or podcasts in standard connectivity, nothing will come up. It'll just say, time to upgrade. Same if you went to, you know, arcade, you may not have access to games, theater, none of these things would show up. Not even Tesla tutorials, by the way, which I think is funny. I think it's crazy that they would not let you access tutorials on your own car on standard connectivity, which is funny. Um, and then even in the Maps app, initially when I first had standard connectivity, you know, they let you navigate obviously, so you can navigate somewhere, which is cool because some cars uh, from other brands, you know, you'd have to pay for a premium connectivity to have navigation. With Tesla, that wasn't that way. 
Um, but with the Maps app, you didn't have like live traffic visualization at first. But that month or that couple weeks where I had standard connectivity is when they rolled out the holiday 2024 update, which did bring traffic visuals um, to the Maps. So even if you didn't have traffic visuals, it was taking into account traffic when it did navigation and give you the optimized route. But now you do get traffic visualization even on standard connectivity. So that was another benefit for people who thought, you know, in general, it wasn't worth it. Beyond that, you also get over the air updates, even on standard connectivity, which is great. I think that's one other thing that, like I said earlier, sets Tesla apart a little bit because some other companies do actually require some sort of premium connection service or even dealer visits to get over the air updates. Tesla's always been really good with just giving you updates no matter what. All that standard connectivity you get for eight years from the original purchase of the car. Um, now, if you buy a used Tesla, it'll still like, it'll have the eight years from original time of purchase. So it'll let you know how much time you have left, less than eight years. Um, but what happens after eight years has been a little confusing. As far as I can tell, there is no way to pay for standard connectivity after it does lapse. So I think you may have to then buy premium connectivity, which I think is kind of wild because you know, buying an older Tesla in general, sometimes you're worried about the older like hardware chips that are running the screen. Like how much capability does that have that's future proofed? A lot of premium connectivity options do require higher processing capabilities and who knows what happens in the future. So maybe you buy, let's say a five-year-old Tesla right now with an older chip, has three years left of premium of standard connectivity. And then after those three years, you have to buy premium connectivity. And then you have an eight year old chip trying to run modern things. I'm not sure how well that'll work out, but we'll see. Tesla does change things. They're known for that. And so we'll see what happens. And of course, we'll probably make a video when it does, but let's move past standard connectivity and talk about premium connectivity. What does it give you? So premium connectivity gives you satellite imagery. If you're crazy, <laughs> I use it. You use it? Yeah. <laughs> okay, so if you're a Timon or someone who wants to use that, I mean, sometimes it is, like, useful to see terrain and, you know, if you're, like, zooming in on an address to see what the parking situation is, maybe. Um, nope. That's valid. <laughs> it's not always the fastest thing. Although it is, like, trying to connect to my Wi-Fi right now, so it's partially my fault. But satellite imagery is an option. I usually leave that off. I just think this looks cleaner. Um, but what was also new in a recent update... I say recent now it's been almost six months but you do have weather visualization as well which is really cool so we can see lots of spotty precipitation in the colorado region you can kind of zoom out and see the entire country storms up in the great lakes region this is not a weather channel <laughs> i've always thought it'd be kind of fun to be a weather person um so you can see this kind of stuff. I think you actually need like one of the more modern chips to actually run these visualizations i 2018 does it it does yep oh okay well good on you uh, maybe just not some of the older like model s's but it can be convenient i guess um it also shows of course weather on destination so if i put las vegas let's see what it shows there it should pop up weather on destination there we go 75 degrees on arrival final destination so cool don't precondition the battery. We don't want to do that right now. Um, you also have access to like speed cameras and then also live traffic data, like I mentioned, which I mean, some of that is also available in standard connectivity, but I think it's still nifty. Beyond that, you also have sentry mode camera access, which can be both for viewing through sentry mode just to see what's going on around your car. You know, if I'm on vacation and I left my car at the airport and I want to see what's going on around it or even just look at the cameras and figure out what's nearby my car so I can find my car again. Um, that's all possible through the enhanced premium connectivity, as well as, you know, if you have your car in dog mode and you want to check on your pet, accessing this camera up here, that also requires premium connectivity to check on your animal. Of course, you can still monitor your car in the app uh, as far as the temperature. Like all the app connectivity is included in standard connectivity, which I think is an important part of owning your car. And that's also something some other automakers don't include um, as standard. So a lot of other car companies, you do have to pay to have like true app access. 
So the big reason I think it's worth it, I mean, I do like having the camera access. Um, by the way, you, you can turn on and off sentry mode from the app even without premium, but like to check on it through the cameras, I like that feature quite a bit and I use that relatively often. But the one of the biggest things for me, I think, is actually using music streaming. I am an Apple Music user. <laughs> <laughs> proudly uh, but of course you can also use Spotify and Coded. other things um, so and also Apple Podcasts none of these would work without premium connectivity so I personally think that's worth it I don't really like to Bluetooth stream through my phone I don't think it's like it's actually fine like Tesla has used a pretty high quality Bluetooth codec, although it was technically downgraded to like SBC, I think, in the new Model 3, whereas it used to be AAC plus SBC in the older Model 3s um, and probably Model Y or Model S, Model X. I don't know exactly which cars have which codecs and they're not super obvious about it, but it's still a good codec and it still sounds really good, still has a good stereo system, regardless of how you stream music. But for convenience, I just like using the app. It's not perfect. I do think the Apple Music app could use a bit of work. Um, still better than Tidal though, that's for sure. And the podcast app, that's convenient, although sometimes glitchy, like doesn't remember the speed at which I'm listening to sometimes. Well, if you just use Spotify, the problem would be solved. <laughs> Time and think Spotify is perfect. Maybe someday we can do a, a comparison on those. I don't know who would watch that. <laughs> there's Someone would watch it, if not just to fight the comments. There's also karaoke somewhere in here. Uh, that also requires premium connectivity. And then the browser. So if you want to go to tesla.com. Oh, yeah, that's really funny. Roadster is a tab on there. Did I save that? Or did Tesla just have that on there? They want your money. <laughs> That's really funny. <laughs> well, this is what I really want to drive, and this is what I actually drive. Um, yeah, so you have the browser access, which is great. I think that's also kind of nifty, but that's, yeah, that's mostly what premium connectivity includes. Um, it's not, you know, a crazy amount of stuff, but I think it's worth it personally. Um, but time made a good point off camera. It's not always perfect. Yeah, I think it's worth it to have it, but there's plenty of times you're driving on 25, a major highway, or like even in a city, and it just stops working. Yeah, sometimes, uh, especially around Denver, because I think Tesla uses AT&T connections to do it, and AT&T is notably not the best in Colorado, uh, or at least the Denver area. And then if you're out in the middle of the mountains, which are right there, and we frequent the mountains, you don't always have connectivity. Yeah, either. randomly just like loses, especially towards like fair play area. Yeah. Um, but, I mean, if they used Verizon, yeah. it'd be perfect. Right. <laughs> yeah, I wish you had the option. All right, so it is uh, starting to rain, which we knew because we had the weather preview and premium connectivity in the uh, map app. In the <laughs> <laughs> is it really worth it? I'm curious what you guys think. Maybe we can even throw a poll out on Twitter or even in YouTube because you can now do that. Um, I'm curious. I'm curious how many of you think premium connectivity is the GOAT? Is it worth it? Or is standard connectivity enough? Standard connectivity is uh, still fine. You still get navigation, you still get traffic. It takes into account traffic, even if, even if you can't see every single detail about the traffic. Um, and, you know, holiday update made it even better. Maybe future updates will make it even better. Or maybe they'll take something away. I'm not really sure. I think we still have questions as to what happens after the eight years. How much will that even matter? Not really sure, but that's premium connectivity.